Good day and welcome everybody. I'm uh, Stefano Pernetti. I'm part of the EXA sales department and I deal with the sales of spare parts and after sales service. In this particular period, we decided to use uh, technology to introduce you to the maintenance activities on our units. Uh, first of all, please uh, uh, switch off uh, the microphone and camera to avoid interferences. And if someone doesn't hear my voice, write in the chat section and we'll try to solve the problem in real time. And uh, if during my relation there is some point for which you need uh, some clarification, uh, write your question and I reply at the end of this webinar. As you know, the life of uh, uh, every machine depends on proper maintenance and the cooling tower is certainly no exception. Today's webinar will focus on this and uh, specifically the ordinary maintenance activities to be carried out on our model called TMR. We are talking about uh, an open circuit cooling tower formed uh, by an upper exchange section and uh, a lower fan section with the water collection basin in the backside and the centrifugal transmission system in the front. The list of activities to be carried out will begin uh, from this uh, tower's lower section. Ordinary maintenance activities are performed when machine downtime is uh, for a scene. And all of this is a uh, threshold from the needs of those uh, who manage the plant. If we talk about a plant that goes uh, to serve, for example, uh, the conditioning of uh, a hospital or a shopping center, the cooling tower is uh, operational for about uh, eight months uh, uh, per year. So the remaining period can be used uh, to carry out uh, all the checks uh, and uh, every extraordinary maintenance. If the tower is part of uh, an industrial plant operating uh, 12 months per year, a few consecutive days uh, of uh, downtime are usually expected to carry out maintenance activities. But uh, I think uh, it would be good to organize to have a few more hours outside the expected downtime. Uh, this because uh, some periodic activities require more than just one annual intervention. For example, uh, the greasing of the periods must be carried out every four months or uh, 3,000 operating hours. Same goes for the control of the belts. Uh, I remind you that these activities take about an hour per unit and in the meantime, the inlet water system can remain operating. Let's start by checking the centrifugal transmission. Uh, um, sorry, obviously the work must be done by qualified technician and the motor must be switched off and the area must, must be delimited following uh, all the safety rules. To access to transmission, you need uh, to remove uh, uh, to remove the protection grids, unscrewing the bolts that fix them to the unit. In this point, uh, the size of the bolts may change according to the age of the unit. However, we talked about using a ten or thirteen wrench or a screwdriver with a socket of this size. Um, now we can start uh, after uh, the grids are moving, we can start uh, checking the belts. An expert technician can do this by <laughs> feeling, uh, by applying minimal force, uh, to the, uh, the middle of the belt with uh, his hands, but uh, there is a correct procedure and I think is right to follow it. As you can see, the wheel base T is the distance between the center of the two pulleys. 
fan pulley and motor pulley. The distance must be reported perpendicularly on the belt, and then you must calculate its middle, its, its middle point. This is the distance, and we have here the middle point. On this point, we connect with a tensiometer, a right device uh, to, for, uh, to, to do this job, to push the belt away from the near one by, by 1.6 centimeter if the wheel base T is one meter long, 3.2 centimeter if it's uh, two meters long, etc. At the end of the operation, the tensiometer must give a value between minimum and maximum. Otherwise, the belt tension must be changed. I indicate uh, the values of the type A and type B belts because they are the, mo the, the most installed models on uh, our units. Uh, the belt model followed uh, by a number indicating its length is stamping on it. These data are very important because if you want to buy, to buy new belts from us, we need them to provide you with the correct ones. Um, so uh, when you ask for a spare part to us, uh, the best way is always to send us uh, also a photo of the name plate applied applied on the unit. It's important to remember that incorrect tension shortens the life of the belt bearing, uh, consequently of the old transmission, especially if the belt is over tensioned. To change the tension of the belt, it's necessary to act on the tie rod located in the front of the sled on which the motor rests to move it. First one, loosening, warning, loosening and not removing. The locking screw of tie rod with a 10, uh, 10 millimeter uh, wrench and then uh, acting on the tie rod with a ratchet wrench or a screwdriver equipped with a 20 new side socket. By unscrewing, it reduces the tension. Screwing, it increases. Uh, once the work is finished, you can check that the tension is correct and then tighten the screw that locks the tie rod. So uh, the slide I'm showing you is the latest model we are using uh, for our units. If the tower is many years old, the sled may be different, but the, the concept, the work concept to be done is always the same. Uh, if the unit, uh, this is, uh, is very important, if the unit downtime will be long, I mean uh, not just few days, it needs to remove the belts and keep them in stock to preserve their integrity and carry out the lubrication when the belt will be reassembled, uh, will be mounted. At this point, uh, it's possible to lubricate the belt with a spray product, we table for, for the purpose, for this job. I'm talking about a water-resistant silicone spray. Um, once the product has been sprayed onto each belt, you must rotate the transmission manually for a uniform distribution. So, now we can uh, proceed uh, to greasing the bearings. Remember, every four months or three uh, thousand hours of operation. Above uh, each support, there is a lubricator to which the pump nozzle must be connected. 
Here is uh, the lubricator, here is uh, the nozzle, and this is uh, the pump uh, to do this job. This pump must contain a lithium grease cartridge for bearings. Um, the quantity of grease to be used corresponds to three pumpkins, uh, just to understand uh, the quantity of a soup spoon. Also, after this operation, you must turn the transmission manually for even distribution. Remember, too little of grease will cause the bearing drying dry and damage. Uh, also, if the grease is too much, it will come out of the bearing seals and will collect the dirty on the outside by and, and then introducing it uh, into the bearing and uh, will damage it too. Now we can proceed at the control of the inside of uh, the water collection basin uh, by uh, removal of the inspection door. After this, it's possible to remove the protection filter of the water outlet connection for cleaning and uh, also uh, checking uh, for signs of scale or corrosion or rust of, on the internal panels. Um, uh, regarding um, this eventuality, I allow myself to highlight a point. In addition to a proper maintenance, a correct maintenance, the life of a cooling tower is also subject to a proper water treatment, which must be carried out by a specialized company. We can also provide uh, the, the hardware, the, the device uh, for, um, for this operation. Uh, upon delivery of a new unit, our customer receives the use and maintenance manual of the same, both by email and in a paper format. Uh, the last one um, inside the, uh, the box for uh, which contain uh, uh, the, the assembly instruments. Inside the manual, there is a page that I'm showing you. There is a page containing a table showing the range of water chemical values. Who deals with the water treatment must be referred to this table to carry out a correct activity. Uh, we remind you that uh, in case of need, the manual is always available, available and we can send uh, it uh, to you by email uh, at any time, in real time. That said, uh, with the water in the system always operating, um, warning, the motor always off, we can proceed to, to check that the water fr fall from DEXA pack, from DEXA pack filling on the bottom of the basin. If the rain from the filling falls heavily from all surface, it means there is no clogging problem, no dirty problems. Now we proceed with the inspection of the exchange section. To do this, it's necessary to reach the aid of the drift eliminator. The, and uh, if there is no presence of a leather wheel platform installed on the unit, uh, it's necessary to use a lifting platform uh, with all necessary process, protection and safety devices. I mean, uh, obviously, safety belts, uh, helmets, etc. Et I remind you that um, uh, ladder and platform uh, are, uh, are components that we can supply or request as option with a new unit or as a spare in every time.
uh, once you reach uh, once you reach the drift eliminators, you you need to remove them manually in order to check that there is no dirt or lime scale inside them, which would be compromise their efficiency. And then always with the water system running to check that the water sprayed by by the nozzle is easily covering the surface of fill impact and the surface itself is uh, is clean if you see that the noodles as you go towards the end of the pipe spray less and less it means uh, that uh, the pipe is clogged therefore you have to extract it manually from the main heater bring it uh, to the ground and slam it to remove the dirt or put inside it a water pressure lens uh, for cleaning. If after this the pipe is not clean, uh, it must be replaced. After this last check, we can reposition the drift eliminator and start the motor to return to 100% of operating. So that's all. Um, now I can go to read your question. Oh, I remind you that this webinar has been recorded and uh, Sorry, just a second. Okay. And uh, you will find me with the with the slides on uh, our uh, web platform soon. I mean, uh, on our uh, website, dexasrl.com, uh, and uh, on uh, on our YouTube channel and uh, on our LinkedIn. Um, on our YouTube channel, you can find also more uh, tutorial videos regarding the replacing the replacing of uh, some components. And um, if you look uh, at our website, you can have a further qualification about our service uh, activities. And I think uh, you will receive. Uh, uh this webinar also uh, at your email address okay okay Informed cooling tower TMR is uh, avail available with an independent blower drive. That means one motor driving one blower. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I remind you, I, rem I remind you that uh, for full type qualification, you can uh, send an email on um, on our address. And um, in this last slide, you can find my email address. So, pernetti at dexa.eu uh, and my phone number. I'm available uh, uh, during all day and during all night. Uh, please, for me, it's better during all day. So uh, at the end of this presentation, you will see a short questionnaire about your satisfaction. Uh, please, uh, we would like uh, uh, you to fill out. So if there is no further question, um, I recommend you stay tuned because uh, we'll invite you to other webinars soon.
Uh, the answer it just arrived uh, a full uh, reply about your question. So it depends on the model. It could be done a special execution if needed. We're speaking about uh, of the independent blower drive. What be what will be time duration to change the fields? So, uh, as you know, there are um, there are uh, many units of the same model. So, if the unit is uh, is not so big, uh, it it need a short time respect a bigger unit. But for uh, for the, this operation, uh, you must consider one working day with uh, two technicians. Auto maintenance fields. Uh, so if the um, if the unit is under um, a proper maintenance, the field can be as uh, a life of about four or five years. So, there, sir, I hope uh, you are satisfied. And if you if you have uh, if you need uh, further clarification, don't hesitate to contact Al to, to contact us. Have you a uh, good day, uh, so so? No, just a moment. For the scaling of the evaporative condenser, please give which are the chemicals recommended can be used. So uh, for carry out this operation, you can contact a specialized company in order to have um, uh, the right product to use. When will access to the program be provided be provided in Russia? So uh, I, I don't understand your question. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, that now ah, design program. So I can tell you that uh, at this moment uh, we are providing uh, some some unit in Russia. And when um, and when we provide the units uh, together, the units we provide uh, uh, obviously the design, the drawing, etc. But but if you need uh, one of these, uh, uh, you can contact us. How to replace um, how to replace fan bearing? So. For uh, for replace uh, fan bearing, uh, obviously you have to remove the protection grids, and then uh, for remove uh, the damaged bearings, uh, uh, the best way is uh, to cut it, and uh, and then um, you can install uh, the new one. So uh, uh, about beer, it is important to remind also that uh, um, a damaged beer uh, continue to to operating, it will damage also the the shaft. So it's better to to do the check uh, regularly. So they're all. I salute you. Keep in touch. Ciao, ciao. Bye.